In today's Entertainment City, we are talking to Jessica Chastain about bringing the untold story of the zookeeper's wife to the big screen. But first, move over, Batman. Batgirl is here to save the day. I have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. The DC Universe has been trapped in the dark and gloomy shadow of the lighter and more critically successful Marvel Cinematic Universe. But things are shifting thanks to Batgirl and Joss Whedon. Popular Batman character Batgirl is flying solo, getting her own standalone movie. And Whedon is on board to helm it. Here's why that's important. Whedon led the first two uber-successful Avengers blockbusters for Marvel, and now he's very close to jumping ship to rival DC. This is excellent news for DC fans for two reasons. One, Whedon will hopefully bring some much-needed lightening up to the grim universe we've seen in the franchise's films to date. And two, Whedon's already known for creating unapologetically strong characters for women, breaking ground with his tough heroine Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That being said, some critics are questioning why a female director couldn't have landed the Batgirl gig. Batgirl will be the second female superhero standalone in the DC Universe. Wonder Woman hits theaters this June. An Oscar-winning trio showing up in style for going in style. Hollywood legends Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin hit the red carpet for the world premiere of their new bank heist movie, which combines comedy with social commentary. I think the subject matter is uh, very contemporary. So, yeah, we may, we may survive it in good style. How could you make a movie about seniors uh, in 2017 without discussing pension disappearing because companies are going overseas, the health care debate, um, uh, predatory lending from the, from the banks? So we wanted to tell that story, but in a, in a comedic uh, heist caper way. Going in Style is a remake of the 1979 flick of the same name. It hits theaters next Friday. Tune into Entertainment City next week for Terry Hart's chat with the stars. You know, these days I look at this and say, what page did my character die on? <laughs> oh, I make the page 62. I'm going to take that script. We have room. We could hide them. An incredible true story of how a Polish couple used their abandoned zoo to save hundreds of Jews during the Second World War gets a cinematic telling in The Zookeeper's Wife in theaters today. It stars Jessica Chastain in a pure-hearted portrayal of a different kind of heroism than we're used to seeing in war movies, a Holocaust film concentrating on women and animals. Doing this film and being on set with animals are so authentic. They don't lie to you. They are who they are. That's right. So this is amazing. Jess, you're an executive producer. You star in it. You directed it, Nikki, mm -hmm. written by a female as well. How does the essence of this film uh, become influenced when it's enveloped by so much magnificent female energy? What's consistent for me across all of the responses is that people, we know the story of the Holocaust, right? But somehow people are receiving this differently. Yes. They're feeling it. And I think that's one of the that's that's one of the qualities of this kind of filmmaking, where it's very emotional but completely unsentimental. Oh, it's such a great movie! And coming up on Monday, we will have all of the highlights from the 2017 Juno Awards. Of course, Adam Wilde is going to be there on the red carpet.